We are on the path to stand and deliver. I'm yours on WrestleMania weekend. But first, we've got a bit of a roadblock. End of the line. However, before we even get to roadblock, end of the line, we got to talk about this show. And my, oh my, things certainly occurred. Goodness, God damn me, what has happened to this once proud wrestling brand? I'm John Rantham with my WWE, NXT, and you. <laughs> There were a couple decent moments on this show. A couple things where I'm like, okay, this might not be all that bad. And then let's go right to the cartoonish, stupid bullshit that just cuts the talents off at the knees, cuts their nuts off, rips their guts out, strings them up like they're David Carradine in the Far East. I mean, my goodness, what has happened? Is Shawn Michaels booking with his good eye or his eye that can go east to west? Without even, you know, moving one goddamn bit. Nevertheless, Tricky Ticky Williams is cutting a promo on Ilya Dragunov. He's going to beat him. He's going to do this. He's going to destroy him. You can do all this. But I don't exactly know what he said because it's a lot of language I don't understand. But that being said, Tricky Ticky's a hell of a goddamn promo. And then he took on Ilya Dragunov. And this was a pretty good match. Dragunov is weird. I, most anyone else that does the facial expressions and the animated stuff that he does it wouldn't work it works for him because it suits him he just looks like he's like full of controlled chaos and he's just ready to unleash and trick is not bad he's not great in the ring but he has grown and shown a lot of promise <clears throat> and he did here i hate booker's commentary my god booker t is terrible on commentary you know i'm starting to think that maybe maybe there's a reason why I try to tune the commentary out of a lot of these shows and why I was actually glad to be at Dynamite uh, in Seattle on January 4th. Because even though there are some talented people in, on the respective commentary teams, I like Vic Joseph. Booker, he is just full of just cartoonish phrases and just a bunch of shit that makes no goddamn sense. He brings down every segment, every match, everything he is involved in. One of the best tag team wrestlers of the last 30 years, Harlem Heat, one of my favorite tag teams of all time. A guy that should have gotten a singles run in WCW, like main event, well before he did. And now he's just a fucking caricature and he's terrible. Anyway, J.D. McTuna shows up. And that's J.D. McTuna, by the way, the guy with the Lego head. <clears throat> this is well paced, trick, you know, had a good showing here. And the Torpedo 1-2-3. Pretty good start to the show, despite the fact that Booker T's commentary brings down everything because he's terrible at his job, and J.D. McTuna was there. And we're getting McTuna versus Dragunov, and we're, I don't know why they feel the need to do Roadblock, end of the line, instead of just going to stand, deliver, and just feature matches on the TV to build that up, because <laughs> I really don't understand why stand, deliver isn't maybe on Thursday, like, Instead of on, you know, WrestleMania weekend, I think that's a big fucking mistake. I think you should have it on Thursday. And then you have SmackDown on Friday and you have whatever. And maybe have it in the same venue as SmackDown. I, I don't get it. Fallon Henley wants to talk to Jensen, but his phone's off. She's trying to apologize to Kiana, but wants to do it in person. Briggs says, well, you were wrong. This is high school drama bullshit. And I like Fallon Henley. I like Kiana James. And I think they could be a good team. Stop making your characters or your gimmicks or your wrestlers, your athletes, seem like idiots. They at least stopped doing that in the net. No, they didn't. Mako Satamura, who is far from an idiot, she's a really good <coughs> talent, a great trainer. She wrestled on an episode of WCW Nitro, which with each passing day I am reminded, WCW has been you know, basically out of business for going on 22 years now. Damn it, I was 20 years old when the Monday Night Wars ended. <clears throat> well, officially. Anyway, Roxanne joins in, and I know what they were going for. A bunch of recruits, a bunch of training and everything, but this this was stagey. I get what they were going for, but this was stagey. This just didn't click to me. Even though I think Roxanne and Mako Sonoma are going to have a good match. Tyler Bate promo. Their crowd is chanting, we want Waller. Other people are chanting, no, we don't. And going to embark on a mystical journey together. Is he going to be an inspirational, motivational speaker? What, what? Tyler Bate is a smart guy. Tyler Bate's a really good athlete. I don't know why in the world they're doing this with him. Okay. Then suddenly the schism shows up. Who I want to remind you, I actually don't hate the talents. So Joe Wayne Gacy actually isn't a bad worker. He's a pretty good promo. 
the Grizzled Hung Veterans actually were to be rectimized as a uh, team, in, in all seriousness, let's use the Christian name, Grizzled Young Veterans. You know, Gibson and Drake, they could, they, they're done, they're toast. And Rock's daughter, I am convinced this is not going to work out for her. I mean, <clears throat> this group's stupid. I'm sorry, it's stupid. Too many stupid stables in wrestling. I don't just mean in WWE. There's definitely too many in AEW. There's definitely a couple too many in New Japan. But anyway, someone save this shit. God not chase you. God damn it. If, if, if I, release everybody or at least send them home for six months with pay and bring them back with new gimmicks. This is embarrassing. <clears throat> All because Ava Rain scared or drugged or mugged Thea Hale recently. What has happened to wrestling? What has happened to wrestling? I know the stupid shit always happened, even in the 90s with the early days of Raw and going all through and everything. <laughs> I just don't get Jägermeister, which I certainly could have used a lot of, and I don't drink, so that tells you how much this frustrated me. And Rip Fowler, R.I.P., boy, rest in peace to all this shit. Yance Andre, Chase, and Dookie Nuki Hudson, oh boy, Ava Rain and Thea Hale were there, and uh, Joe Wayne Gacy was there. Go away is what she was yelling in the air horn. That's what I was yelling at my television as this kept going on. They went through a fucking break with this goddamn thing. These tag teams that actually might mean something if they weren't, um, you know, clouded in such cartoonish bullshit. <sighs> Ava Rain scares Thea. And then we get a double code breaker, one, two, three. And then Dookie Nuki says she has to grow up. Is this a university or a charity case? This is bullshit. How dare how dare you, Shawn Michaels, you once great wrestler, you lazy-eyed fuck. It's not my fault. Great. Now she's Snitsky. She's going to punt a baby. Maybe she could punt Shawn Michaels' eyes back into working form. Anyway, Robert Stone is trying to motivate Von Wagner. Wearing a suit like that, I would be motivated to literally gouge my eyes out. Tony D and Stack show up. What has happened to NXT is what I wrote down. More yelling and loud noises. Mackenzie is with Gulak and Charlie Dempsey. And apparently uh, Hank Walker is just too nice. Jesus Christ, JC James, what I wrote down. Sol Ruka, a pre-tape on the women's division, wanting to improve herself and do skateboarding stuff on TikTok. Okay. She's got a good look. Speaking of good looks... Um, well, maybe not so much good look. She wants to face Zoe uh, again, more on Zoe Stark. Like, she wants to face Zoe Stark, and it's frustrating because Zoe Stark actually doesn't understand what those crazy kids are doing with their skateboards and that rock and roll music and everything, and she feels that everybody should just, she feels everybody should be repressed and everything like they, like she was back in the 1950s when she was a housewife. So anyway, Indy Hartwell and J.C. Jane, that should have been a good match, but this is more of an angle match. J.C. looks incredible. Indy is spinning her wheels in NXT. Gigi eventually shows up and attacks J.C., and we're getting that match with either Roadblock, end of the line, or um, or possibly Stand and Deliver, which I think it should be safe for Stand and Deliver. And what they do? They fought off. Speaking of fighting off, so more Mako and uh, Roxanne basically just teaming and or uh, training and doing all this, and you, it doesn't come from here. It comes from here, the training. It comes from your esophagus, apparently, according to where I'm pointing. Mackenzie with Zoe, she wants to get at Mako, because people say Mako is the veteran, but Zoe was around when the plane bombed Hiroshima, and Zoe was also around when the first samurai were ever, you know, formed and everything, and actually remembers being at the first Kabuki Theater. No, she likes no theater. Well, why did you raise your hand? Because I like no plays. No plays are my favorite, so you don't like any theater at all. Anybody that gets that reference, I love you guys. But seriously, Zoe's just got to be upset because everybody's, you know, being called a veteran, and she's the one that's been around since pretty much there were cave women <coughs> having to fight off cavemen while dinosaurs were roaming the goddamn earth. Gallus, um, one of the Coffee Brothers and Wolfgang Peterson, took on Enofe and Blade. No TV entrance. I remember when Anofe and Blade seemed like they were going to get a bit of a push. Non-title match. I like Anofe and Blade. Gallus do nothing for me. And two guys that were clearly trying to be pretty deadly glory uh, cosplayers, which is saying something. They have a cake, but don't worry. Gallus won. 
because we can't actually uh, try to inspire any, you know, craziness in the tag team division. And then they try to put the cake in the face of um, Gallus because it's the two-year anniversary of Gallus losing the tag titles to Pretty Deadly Glory. And then Pretty Deadly Glory attack the guys with, or attack Gallus with chairs. This is after, by the way, one of those cake guys takes a hell of a bump to the floor. I hope he's all right. <laughs> They're trying to make pretty deadly glory faces. You want me to cheer these goofs? Ha! Ha, I say. David Cato wants revenge on Apollo. Cool. Stevie Turner, or Randomizer, or whatever, that, just, that sounds like some kind of weird MP3 program. MP3s, boy, that's old. About the division, she uh, apparently has fast fingers for Rise of Lyra. I may have misinterpreted that. Von Wagner or Robert Stone took on Tony D with stacks. I want everyone eradicated from this division, is what I wrote now. And I don't even know what division these guys are part of. Because <laughs> it's the men's division and the women's division, they don't have weight classes. So, <clears throat> Tony wins with a slam. Kelly Kincaid. Um, who I think is dating one of the Pretty Deadly Glory guys. You know what? Good for them. In all seriousness, good for them. She's interviewing Tony D and Stax. I, I assume the Von Wagner and Robert Stone are arguing, though I don't know how anybody could hear anything over Robert Stone's loud suit. Even not on camera, it was so goddamn loud. The space station heard it. Hey, Dijak, we're going to face you in a jailhouse street fight. Is somebody going to be locked in jail like the Mountie was against the boss man? Implied prison R jokes. Yay, man, the 90s are weird. Mackenzie is with Nikita. She'll be out for over a year, or close to a year. Nikita's toast. I mean, it's what happens when certain you do certain things to your body. Your knees are going to give out and everything and whatever. And yeah, Nikita is pretty much done. I mean, she, she'll probably get enough of a chance. But she got injured before. She was out for months, and then she came back, and then she got injured again. Apparently, she got it from behind in the NXT parking lot. And then Tiffany shows up. I could say a joke here, but I'm not going to. But let's just say three dirty blondes. One got it from behind on camera. I've seen this movie before. So, Tatum and Ivy, we've got friction. Tricky Ticky Williams is being talked to by Carmelo in the trainer's room. Tyler Bate offers more motivational stuff and is going to face Carmelo later. Okay. Don't know what they're doing with Tyler here. St. Devil's Fire with Jesus Christ, Tyler. Good grief. Boy, you want, boy, that... What a look. What a look. Against Ivy with Tatum. Okay. Ivy, um... <clears throat> Ivy has potential. I think they're really just spinning their wheels with a lot of talents and just trying to keep people in there, so... That's why St. Devil's Fire is teaming with Isla. I need Isla to berate me like that is what I wrote down. <clears throat> Later, we get distractions. Because they're both uh, Tatum and Ivy, or T Tatum and Ivy, too many uh, too many names, pal. Tatum and Isla are here on respective parts of the ring, and Ivy uh, bumps into uh, Saint Elbow's fire, or bumps with Saint Elbow's fire into Tatum. This is really difficult to describe, and then uh, Saint Elbow's fire wins with the gory bomb variation. One, two, three. Okay, tension with Ivy and Tatum. Anyway, I mean, who wouldn't want to be under Isla? I mean, under her learning tree. That's what I meant. Not the first one. Don't accuse me of that. Kiana is with Gia. I wish. But Fallon um, offers to um, offers an apology. You could have told me. You could have told me all this. You could have told me you had a brother. I wanted you to trust me and everything. And these women have talent. Why are we making them high school drama queens? Why? What is this? What is this? Mackenzie is with Wesley. We're having another open challenge. Steiner took on gender, where Indus Share tried to interfere. This was an NXT title match. This is the state of the NXT title division, or the NXT heavyweight division, where they have gender as part of this. Yeah. The Creed stop Indus Share. They fight off. And even though the crowd was cheering for gender, and I want the entire Capital Wrestling center crowd basically sent home or sent to the goddamn gulag that's a bit much i suppose i'm not saying steiner is exactly a world beater now he's going to take time but he's the best prospect they have <clears throat> he wins with a spear carmelo's up on in the crow's nest 
And then suddenly, Grayson Waller hijacks a goddamn production truck and wants to talk to Shawn Michaels in two weeks at Roadblock. Okay. So anyway, one of two things is going to happen. They're going to have Shawn Michaels come out of retirement to face Grayson Waller, which would be a bad idea, especially if that Saudi Arabia tag match is anything to, uh, you know, factor in. God, that was embarrassing. Or Dragon Lee. Or they bring Jay White in. Please bring Dragon Lee in because I don't think Jay White uh, versus Waller is a good idea. Anyway, yeah, that's all I got to fucking say. This show, this show, the NXT used to actually be good. Now NXT has pockets of being good. And then it has cartoonish shit. Agree, disagree, what I said, like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Recklin. I'll see you soon.